If I was an Olympic athlete, I would rather come in last than win the silver, if you think about it. You know, you win the gold, you feel good. You win the bronze, you think, well, at least I got something. But you win that silver, that's like, congratulations, you almost won. Of all the losers, you came in first of that group. You're the number one loser. We will have so much winning if I get elected that you may get bored with winning. I agree, you'll never get bored with winning. We never get bored. It's arrogant meddling. It's what got us in trouble in the first place. Doesn't anybody understand that? Something like, I am a god. Everybody says, who does he think he is? I just told you who I thought I was, a god. I'm the king of the world. I've never really understood our obsession with winning. Wow, and then what? What's the cure? Medicine? Make me like them? Not gonna happen. I'm by winning. So many of us believe that we should strive to be at the top of the mountain, better than the person behind us pushing to become greater than the person in front of us. And even this strange mentality that everything in life should deliberately revolve around some sort of challenge. While Inside Out taught us that it was okay to be sad, a decade ago, Little Miss Sunshine taught us that it's okay to just be yourself. I remember reading this interview with Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's actually quoted um, in the book, yeah, where he said um, he was talking to a group of high school students. And he said, if there's one thing in this world I hate, it's losers. I despise them. And I thought there's something just so wrong with that attitude. Like there's something so like demeaning and insulting about referring to any other person as a loser and I wanted to you know Richard is the philosophical antagonist of the story I wanted to attack that idea that in life you're either going up or you're going down you know it's all about you know status and impressing other people as screenwriter Michael Arndt describes reality media has instilled and even reinforced this false assumption that in society only one person emerges as the winner and the rest of us are condemned as losers it's a very destructive concept, the idea that we have become so obsessed with competing with others around us that we forgot what really matters. Whether we are driven by unaware self-superiority or self-consciousness, we spend so much time comparing ourselves to others or the expectations of society. But what's really important is that we don't get swayed by worries of judgement. This is what I love so much about Olive's character in Little Miss Sunshine. As the centerpiece of the film, the fact that no matter how undermined, condemned or scrutinized she is, the important thing is that she believes wholeheartedly in herself. She is taught by her grandfather Edwin not to care what others think of her and not to let anyone weigh her down, which at a young age is incredibly common given the peer pressure she's inevitably going to feel. Her winning attitude, one that doesn't reinforce an arrogant or competitive mentality, shows us that the real victory is staying true to ourselves, and that trying matters more than actually winning. A real loser is somebody that's so afraid of not winning, they don't even try. Now you're trying, right? Yeah. Well then you're not a loser. Little Miss Sunshine is presented with this deliberate modesty, this aesthetically humble sincerity that uniquely separates it from many other films of the same genre. As a piece of filmmaking, it's subtly delivered, naturally observing its characters and lingering on intimate moments that we can appreciate and relate to on a personal level, actively sticking true to the screenplay's philosophy. <laughs> but it shows us how powerful ideas and the people around us can be. For example, the film opens immediately with the captivated eyes of Olive, who is fixated on the television screen, a window into our most prized pastime obsession. She gazes in enchantment as the new Miss America is announced and begins to mimic the motions of the winner. It highlights how she is prone to susceptible ways of thinking, such as this flawed ideology that being pretty, talented and winning is the core of life, when in fact it's very unrepresentative of real life. Reality television is manufactured by insincere and unnatural ideas that serve to provoke us. Yet Olive doesn't know this. As a young, innocent, naive child living in a culture where television has become an additional parent, she is being nurtured by ideas that she has no control of, even if there is no harm in wanting to compete in what is ultimately an innocuous competition which she has no intention of caring whether she wins or not. 
This is reinforced by the Alcott to Richard boldly declaring that the world has two kinds of people, winners and losers, and losers are not who we want to be, it's not ideal in society. His opening remarks are superimposed over the image of Olive to accentuate a lifestyle she has unfairly become confined to, as she learns about the world through the eyes of others, as later reinforced by the dinner table scene. I wanted to kill myself don't listen to him. Richard. because I was He's very sick. unhappy. He's a sick man. He's a sick in his head man. Richard! I'm sorry, I don't think it's an appropriate conversation for a seven-year-old. Well, she's going to find out anyway. Oh, okay. But even Richard's ideology is immediately contradicted by the juxtaposition to an empty classroom of ten separate, isolated individuals. In this scenario, Richard appears to be a loser himself. And this social pressure, this burden of inferiority that is inherently perpetuated by the social pressures of acceptability, permeates throughout the entire film. In the opening introduction, the film highlights each character having a weakness. Olive is gaining weight and seemingly unattractive in a pressurised social context, Richard's career is unsuccessful, Dwayne is detached from his family, Edwin is a drug addict, Cheryl is overstressed, and Frank is depressed and suicidal. His demoralised expression contrasts with the bright and upbeat title to convey a very broken view of life that is undoubtedly a distinction from the glitz and glamour presented by the supposed reality television. Weakness is rebuked by this narrow-minded mentality that Richard and a portion of society very aggressively assume. But the thing is, these weaknesses are normal. Little Miss Sunshine uses the comfort of the family institution to demonstrate how individuals attain emotional strength in a cutthroat world. Sociologist Talcott Parsons' theory of the family's irreducible function in the socialisation of children and the stabilisation of adult personalities becomes intrinsically significant to the character development. At first, it's a broken family who are strained by various individualistic selfish desires, which are further ruptured by Richard's failure as the breadwinner father. He attempts to pass on tainted concepts to his children, while Cheryl struggles to maintain her motherly role within the family to balance Olive and Dwayne's nurturing. Listen, it is too late. No, it's not too late. You're the mom, and you're supposed to protect her. The children lack parental support, which is resided to the nonchalant grandfather and depressed uncle, who have very different ways of interpreting life. Yet throughout the journey, the Volkswagen minivan becomes a symbol of the family coming to terms with their inferiorities. The minivan's constant malfunctioning encourages the family to unite as one collective team with a winning attitude to help get the van moving. Immediately after they work together, we see Olive piecing together a puzzle of a smiling face, symbolising the gradual growth of the family's happiness as they enter the carefree highway, a literal metaphor that a new positive journey begins. But that's not to say that the family get a fairy tale ending. If the film ended with everybody getting what they wanted, then the characters and the audience learn nothing from their experience. In many feel-good or inspirational films, there tends to be a rhythm to their delivery, making us like the characters, then present them with a relatable hardship to overcome, and by the end, everything works out perfectly so that they live a happy life. Little Miss Sunshine is more human than that. By the end, nobody necessarily gets what they want, but they become comfortable with themselves, and accept that when bad things happen, you just have to stay strong no matter if the odds are stacked against you. Olive doesn't win the beauty pageant, Dwayne can no longer become a test pilot, Richard doesn't sell his self-help program, Frank's collapsed relationship with his ex-boyfriend is never resolved, Cheryl is still seemingly overtaxed, and hell, Edwin doesn't even make it out alive. But by the end, in spite of all their upsets, they accept their misfortunes and inabilities and move on, which is actually a major aspect to life, learning to appreciate who you are and not let anything stop you from being happy in your own innocuous way. Edwin left the world leaving his mark on the family, which is this notion of finding a happy medium. Whether we fight our complex of inferiority or superiority, in the middle ground is being happy and confident with who you are, despite what the world thinks of you. Edwin doesn't care what others think of him. He doesn't believe in the social stigma of winning and losing. He only cares that he's happy with his life. Luckily for Olive, Edwin transmits these values onto her, which gives her the confidence to be herself, which in turn inspires her own father who by this point in the story has just become completely disillusioned by everything he believes in. When confronted by the repugnant and unpleasant world of winning and losing symbolised by the beauty pageant, Richard effectively puts aside his uptight demeanour and embraces his inner carefree self, the attitude his father truly believed in. The Super Freak Dance exposes the hypocrisy and stupidity of the entire ordeal, as the family lampoon the distasteful contest. 
The juxtaposing image of the family in this scene casts them as outsiders, people that don't belong, despite being very normal human beings with natural flaws. During the show, the scene intercuts between the contestants and Richard's reaction as he becomes gradually more uncomfortable and appalled by the show, and how it sexualizes these young girls who lack the ability to make conscious judgments of their own beauty and self-worth at such a young age. But when the roles are reversed and these sincere, genuine people get on stage, the intercutting shows that they are ironically being treated with disgust and rebuke. It's a very cringeworthy moment for sure, but because we understand that the family are truly content with themselves and that we also hate the pageant, we enjoy and cheer for their newfound gleeful attitude. Olive is not acting or pretending to be something she's not, as opposed to the other girls. She's having fun with her life, and seeing the entire family embrace this attitude effectively makes them winners in their own right. Yeah! Little Miss Sunshine requires a certain kind of perspective from the audience, and whether or not you agree with its politics, there is something honest and unflinchingly true about how we all face inevitable weakness or an adversary. But it's how we crawl our way out of this negative feeling and embrace our imperfections that truly shines brightly in Little Miss Sunshine. Just, 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 just,